Hi friends, welcome back to my studio. I'm Katie. It's mid-April, so I figure now's a good time to talk about how Q1 went in my journals and planners. So this will just be a bit of a flip and a bit of a chat, uh, just because, um, you know, I have some feelings and I figure we can talk about them. I got my coffee latte thing going on and, oh. Anyway, I figured we'd, we'd chat. So I've got two books here. It's possible we might get into some others, but probably not. Let's talk very quickly about the one that's not here, which is my paper test design weeks sized undated planner that I use at work, which is why I don't have it here with me. I meant to bring it home and I, I failed to do so. Um, I've been using that at work a lot. Uh, I don't always use the weekly view which is fine because it's undated that's why I got the undated and I'm not using the back pages at such a rate that I'm like if I miss some weekly views I, I have a better chance of um the whole thing working out evenly at the end so I'm just doing that based on how I feel uh we'll talk when we get in here about how some of my mood has been affecting some of my planners that's been true at work as well and so there have been times where I only really feel up for the daily view for whatever reason and sometimes not even that so that's not here but I am still really happy with it I do love the paper test design layout for at work I will post a video to my like unboxing and like thoughts about how I was going to use it I haven't changed any of that so I'll leave that below so these are my two Sterling Inc. common planners. I have the passport size and the big B6 size, and they are very much tied. Um, they are like really part, two parts of the same system to a certain extent. So I will talk about the passport first, I guess. And we'll, we'll come back to the B6. I did use a B6 last year. Um, there weren't the passports last year, although I did spend about six months in kind of a, a mock Sterling Inc. once they had been announced and the pre-order had started. I made um, some like mock booklets and used it for six months. So to a certain extent, even though the official uh, Sterling Inc. one only has been usable for the last three and a half months, uh, I kind of have actually six months before that. So I'm feeling very comfortable. There was a time where I thought that maybe next year I would switch into a six for just a little more space. I don't think that's true. I love my whole setup and I have more and more accessories built on this size. So I'm trying very hard not to uh, commit myself here three months into what I will be using in 2025. Uh, I actually hope not to really be pre-ordering next year because I kind of feel like I have a shakeup in my future, more so with the other one than for this one. This one I kind of expect to be the same, but I'm, I've made a commitment not to commit myself ahead of time. So, um, anyway, this is, this is my passport planner. Uh, you recently saw a unboxing and first impression for this pen. I will leave that below. This is the Visconti Mirage Mythos. I really love it. I've been really, really happy with it. The only update from that video is that I do try to hold it a little higher than I normally do because this engraving can be a little irritating on my ring finger. It's not terrible, but I am always trying to move my grip up further across the barrel and or up the section and um and actually this textured part is significantly textured enough that it, it actually kind of helps keep me stay up further so that's not a bad thing i've been really happy with that there's a video for it but in that video i think you probably saw um the cover I had, which was almost an exact match, which like on the one hand, it was kind of fun that it was an exact match, but it was a little too matchy matchy for me. So I sewed myself a new planner cover. So I, I sewed myself a new one. Uh, I think it's a beautiful color. We're still getting used to each other at first. I was like, eh, yeah, I don't know, but it has grown on me. 
Uh, I have a video about this whole setup below where I talk about how this system works from a leather cover perspective. At the time I was on the fence about whether or not I was going to be selling these. I still haven't been. I'm just, I'm insecure because I haven't found a good way to get the pen loop the way I want it to be and to get nice even stitching that I feel like would command the kind of price that this amount of work would be. Um, so I don't know, you can leave me in the comments. If, like, how much would this kind of thing bother you? I kind of, I kind of think it will. I'm trying to get better, but I don't want to buy new equipment. And so I'm using the sewing machine I already have, and there are pros and cons to that. But for me, it works great, and I've got, um, I carry a fountain pen. This is, um, what I use as a highlighter. This is the, uh... Pilot Parallel that I've moved into a different pen body and a pencil and I carry all three of those on there. It's a little unwieldy but it's actually extremely convenient for me. Um, and then just got some decor here. I don't love how this mist color which I think is really beautiful looks with this leather. And that's disappointing to me. It looked stunning with the purple. Here, there's there's some weird color thing happening. But I don't spend a lot of time looking at it open like this, so I'm trying not to let it bother me. Yeah, so this is the Passport Planner. Uh, I guess we'll talk about the rings afterwards, but these are um, 15 millimeter pocket-sized rings that I've also got in here. Let's take a little kitty cat off and we'll just we'll just flip. So I have fallen off of all of my habits. I did great here we'll talk about this. I did great in January and February and then I fell off the wagon here in March and April, like so many flip throughs that you will see do. Like that's just kind of how these things have a tendency to go. I feel a little bad about it, but not terrible. These were meant to incentivize my habits and to track habits I was trying to build for 2024. And I do feel like the two months that I did it were enough to really get the habits. Most of my habits really, well, really all of my habits are solidified. Most of them solidified in the sense of getting them done. One of them, which is my stepper in the uh, solidified habit of not doing it. So I would like to get back to that. Uh, but all these habit trackers kind of fell off and I'm, I'm not going to beat myself up about it, but I might, I might try to reassert them when I have maybe new habits that I'm looking to develop. This is my symptom tracker. Uh, I'm reasonable at keeping this up. These are the days of the week. These are the, the weeks of the year. And I have kind of, uh, uh, key for that. I plan on continuing that into this page. So like I only have 26 weeks here. So we'll go through that. These were my weekly habit trackers and my daily habit trackers. I haven't really done anything here in Q2. And then I, honestly, I should take this tab off because it confuses me when I'm using tabs and I, I I'm not a monthly person I'm just not across any of my planners ever I'm just not maybe someday I will be one but I haven't done it in terms of weekly this this has been this is how I start off the year I have a couple plan with me's in my passport that you can check out. But here at the beginning of the year, the way I was doing it, I was using my Pilot Parallel to highlight and break up the space. What I was doing was mail that I was expecting, errands that I wanted to run. This was just a habit tracker to track that I was going to track my habits. 
And then in terms of in the weekly, everything you see in black ink was stuff I scheduled ahead of time. Everything you see in pencil is um, what I actually did. And that's information I used to fill in my journal, uh, which you'll see in a minute. And then under the tasks line here, these are tasks I was hoping to do on that day. Um, and that's the major thing that I've changed recently. I have a video, we'll get to it here. Um, so here we are in January. I don't change the color of my highlight very often, so they tend to go in a several week stints, she says, and is immediately proven wrong, but here we are. So anyway, not, not a lot of change here. This is like a super functional space for me. Here's where I changed it. This is a video. Um, one of these is a video. This one maybe. Uh, that I did about um, how I've been trying to plan while I was depressed. I, you know, I find that Q1 is a really hard quarter for me in terms of like the lack of sunlight, the lack of motivation. I just like, it's just not a great mental space for me. And so what I changed here was instead of having a big task list where I'd assigned tasks for the day, mostly like I wasn't doing it, right? but you know, something like this. And I, I only left a couple spots for day specific tasks, like two or possibly three. And then I divided things into categories so that I could pick things I felt up to doing on any given day, but that weren't assigned for the specific day. So um, the categories I did this week were food, offline, computer, studio, social, and weekend. Um, I did change that here to five minute offline studio computer clean weekend. They change somewhat. I like having that five minute one. It's like five minutes or less. It's for just like, just something you can knock out and feel good about yourself and have it done. So that's what I've been doing here. There is one week in here somewhere, this one, where I just didn't do any of the pencil. You'll see that play out in my journal. I just... I didn't have it in me. I missed it. And, you know, I think there's something nice about sometimes just giving yourself a break, not beating yourself up about it, you know, and, and letting it go and moving on. So that's, that's what I've been doing. You can see I haven't really, I never, Monday was the day of the eclipse and I had the day off of work and it just got all of my, all of my, uh, habits kind of out of control. I, you know, I, I haven't done my monthly reflections, even though we're like halfway. These are monthly reflections for March and uh, goals for April. I haven't done that. I'm gonna, we're, you know, it's not the 13th. I'm tempted to just leave it, take a month off of goals and like come back to it fresh in May, I think is what I'm going to do. I think Let's just, let's just go ahead and move that. So we're going to put that at the end of April. We're going to feel fine about it. And I still would like to do some quarterly reflections though. So that's what's been going on in here in terms of the dailies. The reason, I feel a little silly because the reason I developed this whole like pocket rings add-on setup was because I was afraid I was going to run out of pages here in this um, Sterling Compact because there's only 120 and currently I am not on track to run out and I don't actually need those extra pages but I've still grown to really like them and Q1 is not a great representation of uh, Qs 2, 3, and 4, so I don't know. We, we'll have to see how it plays out in terms of the pages for the rest of the year. I'm still using them, just not very often, you'll see. So, or not for very big lists. So these are just daily lists for the most part. I write the day and whatever, and I populate it from my weekly view. And um, there was a time I was doing focuses. I, I've really, or, and then I renamed them themes. I've really moved away from that. Maybe I could get back to it, but 
I was doing pretty good here in January. My system was new and I was excited about it. Um, but here, here it is. Um, here you can see where I started changing my handwriting. Just, just kind of an interesting thing you'll, you'll notice. Um, I just decided I wanted to change what it looked like and I started incorporating some uh, half uncial elements to it. I, I think it's a really cool look. Uh, so, yeah, here it is into February. You know, some days I've got a lot of things. This was probably a work from home day, it looks like. So I felt like there were more things I could do around. Uh, here's the thing I've picked up from the Anti-Planner, which is like an activity book for people who have trouble getting things done, um, ADHD or whatever. Um, and I actually really enjoy it. Uh, you just put your tasks into like a bingo card and then you like mark them off. Um, so I've done that a few times, but maybe this is the only time it's here in this book. Yeah, I think it is. But like here you'll see that like Monday, March 4th and then not another one, oops. And then not another one until M Monday, March 18th. So, um, yeah. It comes and it goes. We'll see. We're, we're, we're feeling fine about that. Uh, similar story here in my pocket rings. Uh, week 14 is not what week it is right now. Week 15. So I never did any of my reflections or actions or whatever for this week. Um, so some of this is out of date. I just have a bunch of pages here. The weekly reflections until this week i've i think this is maybe the first week i've totally missed them um but i've also missed this, the monthly so i actually do decently on doing that kind of stuff with the moxie life system but uh not not perfectly and that's fine in terms of this food section again pretty iffy the idea is that like there are things I want to use up on the left here and then I have my list and my meals sometimes I use this but often I don't they're still convenient to have as grocery lists though uh, I actually use this section quite a lot this is my media section these are places I write down what things I want to watch and where um, and books too um, I, I use that a decent amount. This page I have stuck with for the most part. I need to update it. This is my arts and crafts budget. I set a lump sum for the year. Um, this wish list I have not been sticking with. This was a place where I put things down when I wanted to buy them but didn't. Most of this stuff has passed in terms of like if I still want them or not, not really, but I haven't updated this since, since January 27th. This I've been decent about in terms of logging it. Where I've struggled is that I didn't have very clearly defined rules about what counted as arts and crafts and what didn't because originally it was stationary and then... But then I was being good about my stationery by buying lots of, like, art supplies. It's, it's, a, little, it's a little tricky. But I'm, I'm glad I'm paying attention to it. I need to update it. I bought some ink yesterday. I think that's it. I think I'm doing decently well. And except for the questions of which things count and which things don't, I'm actually really on... Uh, schedule for I'm about one quarter of the way through my budget so uh, which is good but then it doesn't necessarily leave me room to buy a couple big things that I would like uh, this is just, just some lists the, I just have pages here for writing things down this was like playing with a pen you know this is just I just do random stuff in these pages and because they are I can just take them out they're not precious to me 
you know, if I only have 122 pages in here, I am careful about how I use them. But for those um, rings pages, I can use them however frivolously I feel like it, which I appreciate. So that's my passport planner. I've been really happy. Obviously, sometimes I haven't been doing it, uh, but that's uh, not really a statement on the system and kind of a statement on the state of mind that I was in at the time. All right, let's talk about my basics journal. Uh, you've seen this cover before. I use this cover pretty much every Q1. So it's maybe about time to switch it out. This is from Planners Anonymous. This is their B6 Melody. This one has been sold out for a while. Um, so you'll have to check their website to see what styles are available. They now, they've started doing A5s recently. The um, B6 half year size, which is what I use. So the the only cover six months. It is pretty small in one of these covers, but I already had a bunch of these covers and I love them and I, I don't let it stop me. So I, I never got around to like putting a clear cover on this or putting like decorative paper. I still might. Um, my Planners Anonymous kits come with acetate that I kind of want to make into a clear cover. I also seem to have picked up a little smudgy smudge here, which isn't the end of the world. Worst case scenario, by the end of the half year, I just put some stickers on here. But I bought the the pink color because I thought it would be easy to put vellum over, and then I haven't done it. All right, I I'm not a front matter kind of person. Um, I'm not using this page for anything. This is a page where I'm keeping track of what books I'm reading, and I actually just finished one, so I need to go update this. What am I at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm on my eleventh. So for week fifteen, that's pretty good. I feel good about that. I didn't do any of my goal stuff here. Uh, it's possible at some point I'll transfer some of the Moxie Life stuff in here just as like a journal, like, um, but I haven't done it. That's kind of how I feel about this too, but probably not. I really don't see myself transcribing this stuff. I think, I think it's going to go. I feel bad about it, but here it is. Uh, on to my continued failure at monthlies. Um... This was going to be just a piece of media that I was appreciating that day. And then my um, my currently inked, this lasted four days. And then I switched. Um, then I tried just upsizing my currently inked. And uh, I was going to do like affirmations for the month. And I did that three times. Great. So then I just did currently inked in March, and that's what I'm doing here in April as well. I think that's all I can reliably do on the monthly, and I'm fine with that. I'm going to want my currently inked somewhere, and this seems like as good a place to put it as any. So that's what's going on here. The weeklies have been kind of hit or miss. Um, I... Didn't do this first week. I would like to fill it out. Um, I have the I have the notes in here, but you know, I got home from vacation and then started back up at work, and I just I just lost it. But um, this has kind of been what I've been doing lately. So these are this is journaling, um, and the actual format has changed some, but but this is fairly representative. I use a lot of Planners Anonymous stickers in here. This is from Arctic Adventures. I like trimmed all of the date the covers so that they would fit. Can you see that there's like cuts in them? The new ones fit. I'll show you those when we get there. But uh, this was beautiful though. I love this washi. And um, because in this format I'm not... These are... This was like backfilled. 
at the end of the week and so I didn't s stick to what happened on specific days, just kind of regions of the week and so that means things are crossing the lines. I, what I love about the Sterling Rate Common Planner is how how uh, neutral and light it is so it's very easy to cross the lines. Um, there aren't even lines anymore. Last year there used to be lines. Uh, now there's just the uh, hours which I find incredibly easy to just write over. Um, so I've been really happy with that change. I know some people feel differently but for me it's absolutely perfect. Uh, and then this gives me an opportunity to use box stickers which are a little challenging to use in this B6 column width. It's like a little over an inch wide and so a one and a half inch box is quite large but if you're not sticking to a specific column they fit just fine. So I was pretty happy with that. This is more of the same kind of thing. Um, just filling them in with some uh, brush pens and my fountain pens. Oh, here's fake boxes, which were pretty fun to make with just brush pens. This, these stickers are from Planning with K, printable stickers. I really enjoy this. Uh, these are some Sterling Ink stickers. I don't love this spread. I think some of this stuff is too light. And I think I was really backfilling this and I didn't have a lot of information to go off. So they're more like bigger entries for each thing and a big old smudge. It's fine. But I think here's where I started getting back into the zone. Well, in and out of the zone. So these are in the new Planners Anonymous kits um, that started here with chapters. So the, um, the date covers are smaller now and actually fit without any trimming, which is awesome. I did have to trim the sidebar to fit in, but in general, the stickers fit really quite nicely in this uh, layout, and I'm so happy with that change. Um, it's really reinvigorated some of the Planners Anonymous stuff for me, and they're not nearly as thick, so they feel a lot more appropriate for the Tomoe River paper. But here I've gone back to um, actually having things for specific days and honoring the columns more. These stickers are printable stickers. She sells them in person too. Um, from Nib and Floor. These stickers are from JoJo's Pretty Paper. I have her monthly advent calendar. This is one I like definitely backfilled, but like I I had the notes and I just I just didn't spend a lot of time doing all the art lettering and that makes it so much faster. And that's kind of how I plan on doing some of the other weeks that I just like don't have it in me. Like not all of them have to be such a big production, you know? Like this this is still good. I'm still glad I have this and if I ever like look back on it I will still be able to see and the fact that there are gaps and whatever like it's not a big deal so I'm trying to channel a little bit more of this energy eh. um this one no didn't do it don't I don't have the notes didn't want to do it we're just letting it be but then, you know, I came back a little rejuvenated, the sun was out, and I had a new Planners Anonymous kit. Uh, these highlights are from Karina Loves to Plan. I was just like feeling it. And I really love this. You know, sometimes, sometimes I'm in the zone. These are from JoJo's Pretty Paper. Again, doing, doing all the things. They, this is an old kit from Planners Anonymous. I had to do some serious trimming, although they turned out pretty well. Um, some of this stuff is cut off, but this was for Easter week. Uh, and now I'm a week behind. You know, today's the 13th. I need to go back fill this one. I really enjoyed it. I really like this layout. Um, I'm sad I didn't keep up with it, but I will be glad to have it finished out and then I've got to do all of this week here. I think I'm going to do this style. 
I think I'll, I'm going to put a little work on the decor in honor of the eclipse. I went and saw totality and it was a very affecting experience for me. So I think I might do a good job on the decor, but kind of um, phone it in on the lettering. And I think that'll still look really, really nice. Speaking of phoning it in, let's talk about my daily journal. Uh, here's a place where I wrote down that I should put a January cover page doing great great start here is a page I thought I would put pictures that I took in January another great start here's my daily journaling so I've switched to a different format for it I have started adding these margins on this side where I can put little like colored dots that have to do with what kind of thing I'm talking about in this journal entry and then just a couple words um, there was a time I thought I was going to index my, my journal and I'm, I'm not going to do that. I don't know what I was thinking. So this is kind of to, to do that. Uh, these stickers are from Planners Anonymous and Escarade. These are an old Happy Planner book I happen to have. And this was Washi that my friend Simona sent me. And here at the beginning, I'm doing pretty well on my daily journaling. One of the things I love about the Sterling Ink is that there are enough pages for one page a day, but because they're not labeled, there's room for this day to take up half a page and this day to take a page and a half based on how I'm feeling and, you know, what I want to talk about. And I really, um, I really appreciate that about the Sterling Ink. So... Uh, these are from the washi is from Simply Gilded and the stickers are from Pineberry Paper, I believe. These are Planners Anonymous, Arctic Adventures. It was cold and I appreciated having a kit where it was cold. These are um, JoJo's Pretty Paper Advent Calendar. So it looks like I did pretty good good in most of January. Although here, no, yeah, here things start falling off the wagon. So um, here's an entry that spans three days, which is fine. Here's an entry that spans five days. So clearly I was like back journaling. You're going to see a lot of that here. I also um, have started, in general, even at the beginning of 2024, uh, I had kind of a goal of um, tipping in more stuff and part of that was to like put ephemera and stuff in there. I don't have a ton of actually in ephemera, you'll see a little bit, but uh, and also to use more of my washi, but I also started out doing, started doing this because when I'm at work and I need to get something off my chest, I will write on one of my passport, I'm mean, sorry, on one of my like pocket pages and then I can just tape it in. And um, that's a way that I can still do some of the journaling that I like kind of feel like I need to do even when I don't have my planner with me. So you'll see a few of those. Yeah, here's another one. Um, so, this, this is from Planners Anonymous, Hugo Life. Oh, look, I did a cover page for February. Look at me. I didn't do this, but whatever. Um, yeah, um, mixture of some washies. Apparently, I thought I was going to do something on January 4th and didn't. So, you know, whatever. Uh, here's where I started changing some things. You'll see more of this where... Um, I'm just journaling about something that's kind of captured my imagination for a number of days. So this was the story manacled. Um, and I just talked about that. You'll see more of those. These are from Jojo's pre paper. I've also started trying to do more lettering to show what I'm talking about. So this was Fat Tuesday and the donuts that I got. Again, we're spanning a few days. This was like a live stream that went on for 48 hours, and so it made sense to talk about all of them together. 
this was a little bit of a hyper fixation thing I had for a few days talking about that here's another tip in yeah so here's the f this this is when I was in a particularly bad spot uh, here's February 26th and here's the subsequent two weeks where I talk about it and I have survived 100% of my bad days I, I also kind of enjoyed this as a thing which is I'm not actually trying to hide this stuff necessarily but I wanted to tip this in and I wanted it to look good both closed and open so that's kind of a fun thing um proving that I can be extra even when I don't feel up to it um yeah this was a rough time March cover page of course uh oh this is watercolor that I did uh, directly on the page. This is my friends and I went to uh, Maple Sugar Shack, which was really fun. And then I, this was on the second, and I actually did this on the day of because I wanted to journal about it, but then I went back and backfilled on about the first a little bit. And here I did like two pages. And then I, you know, nothing until the 17th. Um because I had some things I wanted to talk about here, I guess, on the 17th. A couple things. And then here's the 16th to the 23rd. Uh, this is talking about what I did while my husband was gone for a week. And then, yeah, so you can see I've mostly started, at least lately, and this will come and go. Instead of doing daily journaling, I've been doing what I can call episode journaling which is that some things really capture my attention for several days in a row and instead of talking about them in an individual day sometimes it makes more sense for me and is more uh compatible with how I'm feeling to talk about them as a whole episode so this was a few days that like I was really in the, my Baldur's Gate three playthrough which is a video game and I wanted to talk about it and um you know it spans five days or whatever and it just made sense to talk about it all as a unit instead of like daily and that's it that there's there's gonna be a bunch more of these going on yeah the 26th to the 30th this was me obsessing about waiting for ordering and waiting for it to arrive my new Visconti Visconti Mirage Mythos I was so excited about this so again another episode oh this was another rough few days another tip in this one I didn't have any I didn't have more than a page of things to write so I didn't bother doing the inside I just have it looking neat from the outside. April cover page, can't you tell? Um, and then, you know, nothing until April 7th. Although I think I, yeah, I'm not very good about dividing the months actually where the months are. Um, but here's about some fun friendship stuff. My Planners Anonymous kit that was friendship themed. And here we are. So today is the 13th. So it's been about a week. And I, I feel in the zone to do it today, um, but I know one of the episodes I want to talk about, and that might take more than two pages, and it might not, is the eclipse. Um, I did talk about that in another journal. I have a different journal that's for, like, long-term memories that I might want to go back to. You know, like, I don't want to find, you know, some pivotal moments kind of um, journal. So I've already journaled about it. So actually, I might keep it simpler here. Um, also, if you're curious, this is a watercolor painting I made um, after I got back from the eclipse. Honestly, I, I, if you're in the United States, it's going to be tough. But uh, if you can find yourself in a situation to go to totality, it is incredible. Um, my best way of describing it, because people are like, oh, you don't really know what it's like until you do it. And that's true. It's an incredibly embodied experience. Um, the best thing I have to say is that like a partial eclipse, even in like a 98% partial eclipse, is like a cool thing you are seeing the sun do. You know, like it's a neat thing that's happening with the sun. And the minutes of totality are like being transported to a fantasy land for two minutes. Like that is what the difference between the two events are. 
it's really striking. If you have the opportunity to do it, I really recommend it. I am already jonesing to go back, but here's kind of a little bit of a feeling of what it was like. Anyway. So anyway, um, that's, that's all I got going here. I'm on page 54. We're on like day like a hundred and something. So I'm at about half of the rate that I want, would like to be at here. I feel, I don't feel bad, but I do feel sad. Um, like my daily journaling has been a very important thing to me in the past. I love the paper. I love the pens. I love the whole thing. Uh, I just haven't been really in the right zone. And part of it, it's just Q1 is a hard time. It, it just is uh, for me. And part of it too is that the days are really short here in Michigan. Um, and so uh, it makes doing my journaling a lot harder. I really expect it to be easier. Maybe not perfect by any means but easier as the days get longer which we're already getting to be but when it's dark before I get to work and it's dark not long after I get to work it is very hard for me to do this kind of thing but the days in Michigan get very long in the summer and we're already uh past the equinox um you know we'll get to the point where the days are you know, the sun is up at, I don't know, between like six ish and it doesn't go down until 9 PM. And like there are downsides to that as well, but it makes the day feel so full of potential. There's so much time to be creative before work and after work. It's really an extremely different lived experience. And so, um, I kind of expect that A, I'm going to get more reliable and to B, I'm going to be writing more per entry. And so the thing about not having dated pages is that there's room to have missed a whole lot of days and then there's room to do two pages in a day and maybe it'll work out. In In my past two books, the in the books I did last year, I think I was pretty close to exactly the right number of pages um in the first book and I was like 15 off or something in the second book so my stats generally are pretty good um as I said I'm not I'm trying really hard not to think about what planner I might get for 2025 because I just don't feel like I have good quality data so far for 2024 it's too early to be thinking about it even though I am um, and, you know, I, I used this exact planner all of last year. I intend to use it all of this year. I think it's very possible that I will need to do something different next year just because. Maybe not. I mean, it's hard for me to think of what I would like better, but I don't know. Anyway, it's too early. It's Q1. Well, it's Q2 now. But anyhow, I'm not going to be pre-ordering another one of these in like June or July. Um, last year, Sterling Inc. had plenty of extras and I think there's room to wait until November or December. For this, I might get this one. We'll see. Anyway, that was an extremely chatty video, but I hope you enjoyed going along the ride with me. Uh, you know, these things need to adapt with us and you know, it's not always just a from point A to point B. It can be kind of a, a point A forward and then backward and then forward and then backward. Um, and I enjoy, you know, books and processes that allow me to do that and that don't make me feel bad about it. So overall, really pleased with my lineup. Not feeling guilty, but feeling a little, little sad about how some of it got used. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you'd like to hear more from me, uh, hit the subscribe button. I'll have links to a bunch of things I talked about in the description below. And uh, I'd love to chat with you in the comments about uh, if your planner system has been working for you for the last quarter or not. Let me know. I'm curious to hear. Bye, friends. Talk to you soon.